This is the recently revised Toyota CHR, and it's a little bit like a P45. Now, if you're not British, let me explain. You see, a P45 is the official government document you get when you leave your place of employment, usually because you've been sacked. So, turn in this link to get it. This car's called the CHR. Go see Human Resources. You've done something wrong, you're going to get fired. Yeah, that took some explaining. So will the positioning of this car. You see, in terms of size, it's sort of similar to a Skoda Kamiq or a Peugeot 2008. But in terms of pricing, it's more like their bigger brothers, the Karok and the Peugeot 3008. You see, it starts from £25,000, that you can save an average of just over £2,000 off one through CarWow. Now, to do that, you can actually go and do that via our app. So if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can download the app from the Apple Store or the Play Store. If you do not want to do that and you want to do it just the more traditional way, just Google CarWow and you can go to our car comparison website, check out reviews, check out deals on new and nearly new cars, and there's leasing and stuff there as well. So go check it out. Let's kick off this review by talking about the CHR's design. I've always loved the look of this car. It's super striking, really, really good looking thing. And they tweaked it slightly. So the car now has, did you see that? It now has scrolling indicators, wow. Also, the lights at the back are integrated into this lower spoiler. You've got another spoiler up there as well. Don't know what's going on here. It's like they were going to do some fake exhaust, but then they realised they were too massive to even look fake. They just look ridiculous, so they didn't bother completing them. So there's going to be no poking with a stick here because there's no fake vents. As well as tweaking the back end ever so slightly, there's some new alloy wheel designs. There's some new colours, including this burnt orange, which looks really good. And you can get the car in two-tone paint, which this one has, though Toyota calls it bitone. It's like, yeah, I'm not sure which way I swing, you know, sometimes I swing left, sometimes I swing right. I got a kind of black roof and an orange body. I don't care, I'm just easy. I have no idea what I'm going on about, sorry. Anyway, at the front, they've changed a bit as well. Not massively, so the lights are slightly different, and let me get the keys out again. The indicators are now here. I like that. Also, it's got a slightly lower front bumper as well to make it look even more sporty. You might find it hard to just pick out the differences compared to the old car. So what I'm gonna do now is show you clips of the old car. Can you see the differences? They're not great, are they? But anyway, it doesn't matter. This is a superb and striking looking small SUV. It keeps doing that, I don't know why. It keeps locking itself. I hope I can get it in it. Oh yeah, I can, I've got the key. Stupid. The quirky theme continues here on the inside of the CHR and yet again there's some minor changes. So they've improved some of the materials on the door and places that you're likely to touch just so it feels a bit more premium. There are still some cheaper plastics lower down, especially down here on the door bins. Look at that flex there! That's awful! I don't know why you'd be doing that. But anyway, just trying to make a point. Then there's the design thing that continues through, like the diamonds everywhere. So you've got diamonds here, diamonds on the roof. There's like diamond shapes here. Even the stereo speakers have some diamond theme going on as well. It's pretty nice to sit in. I do like this car. They've also upgraded the seats, so they're slightly better than before, though they're really comfy in the previous version of this car. So that's an added bonus. They've also updated the infotainment system, which is the biggest bonus of all. And that brings me on to this car's specs. The entry level model is called the Icon and it's pretty much got all the kit you need. So I say just get that car. Get stuff like this touchscreen with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Look, I've got Android Auto up there so I can just use the mapping for that. You also get dual zone climate control and a reversing camera. The next level up is called the Design and that gets an electrically operated driver's seat. The front seats are also heated. You get front and rear parking sensors, 18 inch alloys instead of the normal 17s plus an auto park feature, so the car will park itself into space. So really, if you need that, you shouldn't be blooming driving, all right, get off the road. Then there's the dynamic model, which includes the two-tone paint with the black roof, LED tail lamps, puddle lighting to light your way as you climb into the car when it's dark at night. It also gets rear cross traffic alert to prevent you reversing out into oncoming traffic, in addition to the standard fit auto emergency braking that you get on all models. Next is the XL, which has leather seats, silver dashboard trims, and a heated steering wheel. Finally, there's the orange edition, which has, as you guessed it, this orange paint scheme and a JBL stereo. Let's continue the review by talking about this infotainment system. So you've got these shortcut buttons down the side, which makes it easy to select different functions as you're driving, because you can feel your way through them. The screen, the graphics, they're all right. You know, they're not the best, and the icons are a little bit kind of old-fashioned looking. 
The design version, which is the second trim up, gets inbuilt satellite navigation as standard, and it's all right to use in putting destinations and waypoints. It's quick enough, but it's just not as good as going and using your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay with Google Maps always. Much prefer that system. And thank God Toyota has finally fitted Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to its cars. It's about bloody time really, isn't it? Moving on to a little screen you get between the dials. Well, it's very small, so it's very, very basic information. You get a bigger screen available on the Nissan Juke, and the Nissan Juke actually offers a similar kind of quirky looking SUV thing, but for less money. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check out my review of that car and see the best deals you can get on the Nissan Juke as well. Great, anyway, continuing with the actual interior of this car. So connectivity, it's all right. There's just one USB there, which you use to connect to your phone. There's a 12 volt socket in there and... That's your light in here. I can't believe that, really? That's it. Anyway, practicality, looked in there. That's quite a good cubby. You got a decent sized cup holder there. Look, it's perfect for your coffee, see, perfect for it. And there's another one here, so I wanna put my, my Coke in there, but look, it, it, it looks a little bit shallow. Ah, you'll see, Toyota, I've thought of this, it's got this little step in it, so you can actually put things all the way, wait a minute, I was gonna say, the heck is, who's had this car before me? It's obviously a baboon, look, it's got a bright red arse. Whose is that? Anyway, look, see, that's great for taller bottles. And then in the door bins, you can just about squeeze an absolutely massive bottle. As for the glove box, it's very, very, very average. But overall, practicality is pretty decent in this car. What's not so decent though is the layout of some of the stuff. So here's all my climate control, great. Heated seats, there, yeah, okay, that's fine. They're over here. But then the heated steering wheel buttons over here. Hmm. Then the auto part features over there, but the rest of the driving stuff's over here. Okay, Toyota, you want me to have to search around to find things, I see, I get that, it's part of your game. In terms of getting comfy though, is the lever there. Look, enough adjustment in that, and you can get enough adjustment in the seat. Though, it's quite a low roof, so if you're really tall, you may find it. It's a bit lacking in headroom, this car. It's all right for leg room though. You can really put the seat all the way back. That is all right but is it all right in the back seats? Well, let's find out. So the first thing to note is that while knee room is all right, yeah, headroom is not so all right. That's the price of this sloping roof line. If I sit up dead straight, my head is touching the roof. Someone over six foot will struggle for headroom. And that brings me on to what it's like with three people in the back at once. While it's all right in the middle seat because it's kind of squidgy, the body's quite narrow, so everyone's struggling for shoulder room. Also, the people on the outside get pushed up against this sloping roof line. So even shorter people end up banging their head against there, which isn't great. Foot space isn't great either when you've got three people's feet trying to fill up these small wells. In terms of fitting a baby seat, well, You've got these flip off Isofix covers, which, ah, you bend your nail back when you flip them off. You're not, I hate it when that happens. And you might lose f***ing things. <laughs> Once you remove them, you can get at the Isofix points quite easily. The only problem is, is that the doors don't open all that wide, so you do have to kind of work the child seat in. And if you've got one of those big, bulky rear-facing seats, you're gonna have to move this front passenger seat forward to fit it in here. Biggest problem for me though in the back of this car is the fact that you've got quite small rear windows. So it does feel quite dark and gloomy back here. And then there's the cup holders, which are fine for bottles like this, but they're not very deep really. So you can't really keep any other stuff in the door bins. You do have some pockets on the seat backs to just shove stuff in and lose it, no doubt. But yeah, that's about it really. It's all right in the back. And let's face it, kids are gonna be on their mobile devices most of the time. So they probably won't mind the fact that the windows are tiny, but at least they go all the way down. Biggest problem though is look, yet again, where the hell are the USB inputs so I can charge my kids' iPad or whatever to keep them quiet on the journey? They're gonna run out of battery, they're gonna start talking to you and that's just gonna drive you nuts. Let's check out the boot anyway. 
So this car has a low capacity of 377 litres, which is a little bit smaller than other similar size SUVs, but not by much. However, if you're one of these cars with a big ass boot, check out the Ford Puma. Yeah, the new version, not the old coupe thing. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check out my review of that new car. The boot is quite square, so it's easy to pack. It's a bit of a lip to lift things over, but not much, so you can actually just do that to it. And this is hard wearing plastic. And look, oh, more diamonds. How cool is that? There's some tethering points here, 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 some hooks to hang things off here and here, some extra space under here as well. So that's all good. Another thing that's good is this. When you fold the seats down, they do lie completely flat, so it's easy to push other items, other items? Big bulky items to the front of the car. My nail's still hurting from earlier. I've like ripped, I'm gonna have to get some nail clippers. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Toyota CHR. The rear seat backs are super wide, and that means that if you're in the back, it's quite hard to see forward. Look, it's really, really hard to see what's going on. It's really hard, isn't it, like that? See, what's also annoying, the way this roof line slopes inward and you've got these flowing grab handles here, it's so easy to bang your head on them. And, and you can do it when you're getting out of the car. That really hurt, actually. Annoyingly, you can't fit the parcel shelf underneath the boot floor like that, so you have to leave it in there. But of course I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it. That literally flew. <laughs> now all you people are probably going, don't treat the car like that, but I'm just getting my revenge for what it's done to me so far in this video by banging my head on it and hurting my nail. The inbuilt sat nav takes forever to calculate a route, and I'll illustrate that now by selecting Edinburgh and see how many laps of the car I can run in the time it takes it to work out the route. Let's do this. It's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. Oh, that was almost five laps. That's just ridiculous. This car's supposed to be an SUV. Well, try to be anyway. But the doors don't extend over the sills. In fact, the way they've designed them, because this bit pops out, you end up getting a lot of dirt on here. And then when you get out, you definitely just rub it all over the backs of your trousers. I think this compartment here is designed for your mobile phone, but look at this. Mobile phone of modern size. No chance. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. This little sticky out bit of plastic here actually controls the airflow, so it splits over the door mirror, so you don't get a wind whistly sound. In fact, on this revised version of the CHR, Toyota's engineers have improved 11 different locations of sound insulation, such as the door sills and absorption pads, to make it quieter than ever. Check this out, look, you've got some separate runners for the seat belt so that they don't snag on the seat backs when you fold them down. Wait a minute. There's actually some more diamond design under there, which you never get to see. What's the point of that, boys and girls? And non-binary people. Yeah, I hope I don't have to go CHR for that pointless joke. Toyota's new 2-litre petrol engine is pretty high-tech. In fact, it has a thermal efficiency of 41%, which is about as good as it gets for a production car. To achieve that, Toyota's had to 3D print many of the parts inside it, so it's super tight in terms of tolerances. Also, it's about 20% lighter than the old Toyota 2 litre engine. Weighs in at 113 kilos, which is pretty impressive. The battery pack to power the electric motor of the car's hybrid system is underneath the rear seats, so it doesn't actually eat into boot space, which is handy. In fact, there's 180 cells in this particular car. Oh, wait a minute, look, there's some more diamonds here and on the speaker grill as well. Being a Toyota, you get a five-year warranty. Look, it says so under here, I'll just... It says it there, and we might have to claim for a new rear windscreen wiper motor. 
Oops. Right, and let's talk about engines. Now, it's pretty simple. You can now only get the CHR as a petrol electric hybrid. There's a 1.8 hybrid, which has 122 horsepower, or, where's the bloody, there it is. Or there's the two litre hybrid, which has 184 horsepower. Economy wise, they both promise around 50 miles per gallon. They both get automatic gearboxes and they're both front wheel drive. Now, which is the best one to go for? Do you know what? I'm gonna go on CarWow and I'm gonna configure what I think is the best engine and trim choice for the Toyota CHR. And I'm gonna get some offers back. Yeah, I've done that. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can find out what I think is the best Toyota CHR for you to buy and the best offers available on it as well. So go check it out. Now let's see what this Toyota CHR is like to drive. So in town, it's really good. Suspension is brilliant over bumps. You hardly feel them at all. Also being a hybrid, you can just cruise around in electric only mode for short distances and it's silent. It's really quiet. And if you need to accelerate, the engine does kick in, but it's very, very seamless and smooth. What's well, not so smooth though, the brakes. So press them a bit, nothing happens. Press them a bit more, then you're like that. Part of the reason is, is that the braking actually regenerates lost energy and puts it back into the battery. So there's this weird transition between the actual motor doing the braking and the actual brakes doing the braking. And so it's a bit hard to judge, which can get on your nerves. I also can get on your nerves is the turning circle, which is absolutely fine, but it's about a metre less than some other small SUVs. So U-turn wise, it's not the tightest turning, but it's still okay. Look, oh, there we go. Oh gosh, actually that's not bad at all. What the hell was that? <laughs> More feel sick now. <laughs> when you get out onto the motorway, the two litre version of the CHR, which this car is, is pretty punchy. So combined, Petrol propulsion and electric motor gives you instant response. And then you can hear that though, as you're accelerating, you get this moo groaning sound. It's due to the nature of the gearbox. Basically what it does is hold the engine at constant revs for maximum performance. And then the gearbox does its thing to make you increase the speed. That's where you get that weird noise. You think a hybrid's gonna be efficient and indeed this one is. So. I'm averaging almost 44 miles per gallon, which is similar economy you'll get from a diesel in real world driving, but obviously this is a petrol, so you don't have that whole kind of diesel smelliness on your hands when you fill it up, or the fact that diesel probably isn't quite as good for the environment. Finally then, let's see what this CHR is like on a twisty road. So, it can go around corners all right. It doesn't roll about too much, lean, it's got enough grip, it does a fine job. Would I say it was fun? It's, it's adequate, it's adequate. Thing is though, I know this car underneath the skin is very, very similar to the Toyota Corolla, but because the Corolla's lower to the ground, that just feels sharper to drive, and dare I say it, actually a bit of fun on a twisty road. So really, you've got a question whether you want this. You're gonna pay the extra for this for the styling, really. But if you wanna save some cash, just get the Corolla. I think it's brilliant. In fact, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my in-depth video review of that car. I'll probably just have the Corollas telling the truth. Although I do love the look of this thing. So then, what's my final verdict on the revised Toyota CHR? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the CHR. I love the way it looks and it's nice to drive, but it's just a little bit too expensive and it could do with being a touch more practical. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to like it. I'll give it a thumbs down if you feel that way inclined. Also, let me know what you think about the Toyota CHR in the comments box below. And of course, subscribe to this channel. If you want to watch some more videos, they're in the boxes below. And if you want to see how much you can save on new cars, just click on the box over there and I will have my... What the heck was that? <laughs> I will have my best pick of the Toyota CHR and the best deals on it for you to check out. And don't worry, look, the windscreen wiper didn't break. I think it's just had some kind of like fail-safe mechanism just in case some moron motoring journalist messes with it.